Welcome to ForexTV.com. It's Monday, February 11th. I'm Remy Hookie for New York Forex Market Buzz. In afternoon trade as of 1.05 p.m. Eastern Time, Euro dollar is at the 1 and 45 level. Sterling dollar is trading at 1 and 94.88, while dollar yen is around 106.88. The U.S. data front is starting off on a quiet note, and equities have been trading mixed with the Dow back up in positive territory after pairing earlier losses. In the Asian markets, Japan is celebrating National Foundation Day while China is observing the Lunar New Year. Joining me this afternoon to weigh in on the FX market is Rhonda Staskow from Thompson Financial. Good afternoon, Rhonda. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on this Monday afternoon. Well, we're starting off the week with focus on the ECB's policy stance and also this week's U.S. data. And Bernanke's testimony before the Senate Banking Committee on Valentine's Day will also be closely watched. Overnight, we saw the euro edge up against the dollar as the ECB reiterated its focus on inflation. But what are the major fundamentals that will dominate price action this week in the FX market? Well, of course, one of the key factors will be the credit crunch and any more bad news similar to what we had today about credit default swaps or those derivatives that are hanging on the market and their influence on the stock market. Of course, the stock market is higher this afternoon, but that's after another round of bad news. For instance, IKB may have to um, find some capital from the market, and also we have AIG rewriting some of their exposures to credit derivative options. So that will always hang in the background. But right now we have a battle, I think, between the U.S. and the Eurozone economy, and whether, in fact, the Eurozone economy is starting to slow down in the wake of what's happened with the U.S. On the U.S. side, as you said, Bernanke will be important, but there will be a big focus this week on U.S. retail sales, particularly particularly after the really weak results we just got released from same-store sales last week when the market was expecting slight gains. And net-net, not only did retailers miss expectations, but 58% missed expectations, and we got a negative result down 0.7%. So we'll have to brace ourselves for more negative news for the U.S. economy. And on the Eurozone side, of course, we have industrial production, which will be watched very closely because we have a number of officials that came out of the G7 that insist the Eurozone may be slowing, but not that much, and the data may show us otherwise. Rhonda, you mentioned uh, equities, and uh, given the decline in global stock markets and also with uh, risk appetite on the back burner, the yen has seen gains against the majors in today's session. And as you mentioned, credit worries and today's AIG report. Um, if you could tell us going forward technically what your forecast is for the Japanese yen. Well, one thing that we've seen happen with dollar yen that has had in the past is whenever we get a big move lower, we usually get a lot of Japanese investor interest that provides a base, and we have that base at 105, and 108 is seen as a perceived top. One reason I think there could be a short-term bounce in dollar yen because of the current range, because of the current range trading, is that the IMM positions that came out on Friday showed that the longs in yen are the largest since February 2004. That may increase the risk of a short-term short squeeze on dollar yen positions, possibly above 108. But I would use that as a good opportunity to sell dollar yen and look ultimately for dollar yen to head to 103 in coming sessions. And let's move on to the Australian dollar. The Aussie gained today against the U.S. currency, trading above uh, the 90 mark. And as precious metals continue to soar and talk of another possible RBA uh, rate hike in March, are we seeing a short-term bounce in the Aussie? Well, we are seeing a short-term bounce in the yield expectations, but what's very interesting is that we have the yield spread that has probably tripled from the levels we saw a year ago. But the Aussie has not been able to go back to the highs we've seen more recently above 94 cents. And that is because the Australian dollar probably will not be immune to the global slowdown. So even though there's a possibility of going slightly higher, I still prefer to look to sell Aussie between 91 and 92 cents on expectations that ultimately, despite the metals prices we're seeing now, that they will slow down in the wake of the global slowdown. Those metal prices will fall and we'll take the Aussie with it. Okay, and before we wrap it up, let's shift our focus over to the loonies since you did mention uh, the slowdown in uh, global growth. Um, the CAD is hovering around parity again, but um, I want to take this moment to address the slowdown in the U.S. economy and how this will add pressure to exports for our neighbor up north. So, Rhonda, on the heels of uh, BOC Governor Carney's remarks, where is the loonie headed against the U.S. dollar and the Japanese yen? 
Well, I still think you're going to see the loonie um, go up uh, against the U.S. dollar because I think that one the fact that it has bounced a couple of times from levels below parity means that Canadian investors in particular will still look to buy dollars under parity in order to go into foreign investments. Um, from a strategic point of view, most portfolios over there have to be international, and so you have a bigger weight over there. So I know that investors have been looking for good levels to buy dollar cat. So from the portfolio point of view, I see it going up. Also, remember we had an extraordinary M&A that drove the Canadian gains over the last two years. That has stalled. There's not that many Canadian companies. So that's going to remove also a factor. And as you mentioned, the U.S. slowdown is likely to affect Canada, too. The numbers will probably get weaker in Canada, so dollar cat will go higher. I'm looking to 104, possibly higher in the coming weeks on dollar cat as a result. And as for CAD yen, well, I think Canada will weaken also against the yen. The yen will firm eventually to 103, so you'll see CAD yen come under pressure. Okay, Rhonda, thank you very much for insight and analysis into the Forex Marketplace. This has been your Forex Market Buzz with Rhonda Staskow from Thompson Financial. I'm Remy Hokey. Join us later this afternoon for PM Exchange right here on ForexTV.com.